I walk my way to the top, I I cannot fit in the middle, I I cannot fit in the middle, I I cannot fit in the middle, I walk my way to the top, I So, Hillsong Church, which we've heard many times in the news, and I'm not going to go too much in on them because I think we have to have a graceful conversation about the church. But Hillsong Church has found itself in the news again, pertaining to more scandals. So we had the situation with Carl Lentz, you know, cheating on his wife and all of that happening. And then we got a little bit more information coming out of just the Hillsong pastor network that they have. And so this article came from the Christian Post basically saying, and we're not going to dive too deep into gossip. A lot There are a lot of direct quotes in this. We're not going to dive into too many matters of the heart, but this is just about the reputation of the church and using Hillsong Church to speak to it. But the article reads, Hillsong pastors splurge tithes on luxury lifestyles, former members say. So these are some testimonies of former members, and we're not substantiating their comments. This is just some of their experiences. We don't know the full context of it. And so this is all this is all just from this is all perception. And that's why I'm talking about it, because I don't really like to talk about things that are not concrete, that haven't been fully fleshed out. But I just want to talk about the perception of the church today and the reputation. So months of heels on a sexual scandal that rocked its Hillsong NYC location. Hillsong Church is now facing allegations of financial, financial abuse as a number of former members accused pastors of splurging tithe money on lavish expenses. Now, this is terrible, and I encourage you all to read this article. I'm going to kind of skim through it, but essentially they accuse uh, the church, including the LA location, basically of using tithe money and loading it on these PEX prepaid expense cards, essentially to in between buy clothes, meet, very expensive meals, dinners, and living uh, in very costly buildings and things like that. So living arrangements that were probably above what they actually needed. So just really living in luxury. And it was directly, it's being accused of being directly from Tide Money. So Herman, who left the church two years ago, told the publication that she personally loaded the funds onto the card as directed by the leaders. I was instructed to fill them. We had a team count the tithes after every service, and they would locate X amount of money for the PEX cards. So they're accusing that these cards were kind of, it seems like under the table, use of misappropriation of money purposely intended for them to use for themselves for whatever the reason was. And so the cards, which were reloadable, were given to volunteers to make purchases for the church and pastors. So they didn't directly use it, it seems, but people within the church would use it for the purposes of the pastors and the church. Church staff like the pastor, Carl Lentz, who was fired last November over leadership issues, also received their own Hillsong credit cards. Wow, that's crazy. That just sounds so, like, that just sounds so terrible, man. I, this is That is not the situation we want as far as perception of the church. That just hurts us so much. And so many churches have been hurt over financial misuse and misappropriation of resources. It just is heartbreaking when you hear any allegations on it. And I'll spend a little bit more time on it. And I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on this and just the church reputation. Let's see if we can. So it just goes into different things with it. While business transactions normally require some sort of justification, Babbitt said she was never asked to explain the purchases. Let's see. Herman concluded from the New York Post that the church did not normally seek reimbursement for personal use of the cards, which were phased out from Hillsong, L.A., after Bogarts were found to be overusing them. She was unable to say if the cards were discontinued by the other location. So, Essentially, these cards were used at other locations as well, and they kind of phased out. Why? Well, because they were kind of misappropriating. It appears, allegedly, were misappropriating these resources. And another account down here says Brandon Walker it says that he witnessed a lot of toxic activity, including 1100 a day at 
uh, Air, Airbnb retails. There was a lot of eating out, a lot of Airbnb. And he said that there was an instance where they bought $100 jackets, matching $100 jackets before taking them out to dinner at a pretty nice, expensive, expensive Italian restaurant. And the bill came out to, and that's a lot of money, $600, $700 just to eat at a restaurant is a lot of money. And then the person said, wow, she just dropped over a thousand for no reason. That, that is the, unfortunately, the church has this negative stigma, you know, it has this negative stigma of misappropriating resources, of money being misused. And I'm going to stop there, but it's terrible for the church. Got a lot of stuff popping up. It's terrible for the church. It does no good for us. It really has hindered our ability to reach people because this has been the reputation at the church and not every church, okay? <laughs> because church I'm using very loosely because we are the church. The people are the church. But a lot of these establishments and buildings are, it's tough. We're being accused essentially of being people who are deceptive, who mismanage resources, who do wild stuff, who live in many of us living in luxury. And I don't, I got to be careful with how I word it. But what I'm getting at is the reputation of the church when we have stuff like this come out. Now, we always have accusations of negative things. So I'm not talking about accusations, but I'm saying if this, if this is the narrative of every big church, it's very da- it's very damaging and very condemning of what God is actually doing. I believe God is, has worked in these churches. I believe God has done great things through very flawed people. I consider myself among the list of flawed people, so you won't hear me uh, preaching down against any individuals. But what I'm saying is we have to be very careful. And my prayer, and this is a video that's a plea of prayer. We have to pray for our leaders. Why? Because of stuff like this, where people make bad decisions. People have, their hearts don't always seem, by their actions, sometimes their hearts come into question. And so you may question, well, is this person in it to really change lives or are they in it to gain riches or wealth? It's really hurt. It's really hurtful when you see misappropriation of resources and, you know, people who don't desire quiet lives. I think that's a huge issue of it. And then Ruslan does a great job of breaking this down is the importance of us living quiet lives. A lot of us want the latest fashion. We want to have the Yeezys, the Jordans. We want to have all the flyest, you know, high end clothing and all of this stuff look the coolest and look like the hippest. <laughs> The, the best, flyest looking pastors and leaders. But at the end of the day, we're missing the heart, the root issue, which is the heart, which is reaching people, advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is number one. We can't, we can't let that get lost in the equation. And a lot of times we've allowed that to get lost in the matter. Why? Because we're so caught up in our own personal success. We want to be at the top. We want to be the greatest. You know, we have these aspirations for things that God doesn't really have, may not have for us. He might want, he he wants us all to be prosper and be of good health, but he might not have it for us to attain or do certain things. And we have to be willing to accept that. It doesn't mean that we go out of our way to live in poverty or to live beneath what God could have for us. It doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is God might not have, my God may not have it for us, to spend as much money on the clothing. And some people he may, but at the end of the day, we have to understand what is the perception? What is the perception on the outside looking in? Especially if the perception is the church doesn't do enough to help people. I believe the church does a whole lot. I think we're the most giving people. We're the most charitable. We're the most helpful in communities, in my opinion, than any group. So I don't condemn the church, but I think by and large, one of the biggest deterrents, one of the biggest things that keeps people from the church being a part of a church community is that we, for so long, have allowed our reputation to be hurt by not doing, we don't do good business oftentimes. Our infrastructure isn't always as strong as it needs to be. We're not financial experts. I mean, not all of us have taken finance classes or have an education or understanding of how to appropriate finances. It's not easy business. 
it takes a lot of accountability and it takes a lot of honest work. But the question we should ask, like the Bible says, do we desire to have and live honest lives? Do we desire to live in truth? Do we desire to be right? It may not be wrong to spend, you know, to buy expensive clothing, but is it ethical to use tithe money under the table, a percentage of tithe money under the table that isn't reimbursed on personal things that don't really have anything to do with ministry, like buying jackets, like again, allegedly, but I'm saying all of this to say it's not a good look. And once one once one thing pops up, it's like a can of worms opens up for the t- church to be attacked. This could all be fabricated. But the point is, when we allow when we allow just a little leaven to come into the picture. The Bible says that a little leaven, leaven if the whole lump, just a little bit of yeast will bring a big rise to bread. Just a little bit though. It doesn't take much. So all that being said, I am very much concerned. I mean, I'm crying internally about the reputation of the church today, whether it be Christian national Christian nationalists or whether it be just us not being a holy church like we should be or us not um, living up or us falling short of the glory. And we, sh- we will fall short of the glory. That's a nor- It happens. All of sin that comes short of the glory. We get that. Like, I get it. But it's one of those things where it's like when you hear these things, and you keep hearing them over and over. I'm just reminded of how damaging that can be to the testimony of God's beautiful church that should be without spot or ring. Where I truly believe where it talks about it in the Bible, it says that he is looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. And he's not talking about perfect. He's talking about the position, the posture of our hearts. He wants our hearts to be postured in such a way that we're blameless when it's all said and done. People can accuse us falsely, which, again, this may be a false accusation. They can accuse us all they want, but God, let God be true and everyone else a liar. But at the end of the day, I believe our God is looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. And I think that we can be that. I believe in us. I believe in the church. I believe in the church, meaning the people of God. I don't believe in every building that calls itself a church, but I do believe in the people of God. So Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Leave a comment and let me know what you feel we can do to fix the relationship that we have with people outside of the church and how we can restore the reputation of the church. I walk my way to the top, I I cannot fit in the middle, I I cannot fit in the middle, I I cannot fit in the middle.